Well, joining us now to further discuss is Maurice Hirsch. He's the head of legal strategies at Palestinian Media Watch. And here in the studio, we have Samer Sinijlawi. He's a Fatah activist and the chairman of the Jerusalem Development Fund. So I'd like to turn to you first, Maurice. You know, public Palestinian support seems to be waning for the Palestinian Authority following what they call a lack of its of response to the ongoing IDF raids that we're seeing across the West Bank and settler violence in the region. Now, as a result, we are seeing these smaller Palestinian militant factions rising in power, that includes the Lion's Den, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Who is getting the most support right now from the Palestinian public according to the research that your organization does and why? Well, so you have to understand, uh, Natasha, that the Palestinian Authority really has had very little control for, ver for a very long time. Since the elections in 2006 when Hamas won, um, the Palestinian Authority has really been on the retreat. When you ask the Palestinian street who they would vote for, they would vote for Hamas over and over and over again, not because they necessarily adhere to the homicidal policies of Hamas, but really because they of their hatred of Fatah, of of the of, of Mahmoud Abbas, of the people that that Samuel Sinjilawi uh, uh, um, represents, and um, because they're they're simply corrupt, they've been despotic, they they've usurped power for the last. 17 years without going to elections. The Palestinian street is sick of them. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, all of these different organizations, Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and Fatah, are all fighting it out between themselves for the hearts of the Palestinian street. They know that how they've educated the, the, the Palestinian street is that the more violent you are, the more Israelis you kill, the more support you gain. And therefore, you see Palestinian Islamic Jihad promoting violence, Hamas promoting violence. And Fatah then say, coming out and saying, just recently, we've carried out thousands of terror attacks just in the first few months of 2023 um, as a way to gain support within the Palestinian population and in the eyes of the Palestinian population. This uh -huh. I'd like to turn to you, Sabar, and kind of hear your response to that in terms of what you think the Palestinian public feels right now about Fatah, about the Palestinian Authority, and again, these smaller factions that we're seeing come out. Well, um, I'm 100% sure that not Jihad Islam, not Hamas, not Fatah control the street. Uh, I mean, those who have the possibility to push a nerve and activate the street is now our leaders on the Israeli side. If Ben Gvir makes a move in Al-Aqsa or Smodrich make another move on the ground towards settlements, this can activate the street. But I totally agree, uh, the Palestinian Authority lost control of the street. But I think now the Palestinian Authority as a project is more an Israeli project, who is failing now in controlling the situation in the West Bank is the Israelis. The Palestinian Authority is like uh, an autopilot mood. It's like a plane in autopilot. And oh, there is one employee on the control tower from the Israeli side that decides for this plane how to maneuver. So the, the, the who's failing on the ground is the Israel. Is the Israel. And I agree with your uh, uh, guess that uh, it's not only on the Palestinian. The, there is some kind of competition who is causing more violence and, and uh, uh, suffer to the other side. Also the Israeli side. Gantz men uh, propaganda in his campaign was that he has killed 1,300 Palestinians during uh, the Gaza War in 2014. The Israeli army is publicly uh, uh, showing that he has a lethal power in the West Bank. I have never seen an army that can claim that he is so strong in using lethal power against civilians in the West Bank. So unfortunately, the hatred, the uh, use of the suffer of the other side is a common phenomenon on both sides. Maurice, do you want to respond to that before I move on to my next question? It, 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 it's, a, it's somewhat unfortunate to, to, to again hear over and over again the claim that what actually activates the Palestinian street is Israel's uh, um, uh, leadership. Um, it, what we're seeing now is that really the, the, the deterioration over a long period of time. Um, it included the period of time in August 2021, for example, when Israeli leaders gave the Palestinian Authority 600 million shekel additional uh, uh, um, money to try and bolster the Palestinian Authority. It's simply not true. What's driving the Palestinian street at the moment are the Palestinian organizations, the constant incitement of the Palestinian Authority, of Hamas, of Palestinian Islamic Jihad, driving terrorism over and over again, 
That is what the Palestinian leadership is sadly looking for, and that is what they're hoping to achieve as part of this internal Palestinian power struggle where nothing that Israel can do can have any type of influence over that because we have nothing to do with the problem. We're just uh, suffering the consequences. I'd like to ask you, Samara, actually about the Palestinian Islamic Jihad more specifically, which we, we just hear these calls for an uprising specifically from Israeli Arabs. They're, they're speaking out to the Israeli Arab population saying they're, you need to, to take part in another intifada, an armed uprising. What do we know about the Arab-Israeli perspective when it comes to the recent tensions that we've been seeing in the region? Nobody will listen to them, not in the Arab-Israeli society, not inside the Palestinian society. And I again say what activates the whole population, the whole Palestinian people, I cannot differentiate between a Palestinian who lives in Nazareth or a Palestinian that lives in Ramallah or Jerusalem when it comes to issues related to Al-Aqsa Mosque. This is the nerve that can activate everybody, everybody and that's what has happened in 2021. Right. But I would like to refer back to the violence, for that's example. Can, a, can you please, a, Maurice, can you give me one justification? After the massive pogrom against Huwara, and it has been known there was one Palestinian killed by a settler. The name of the, the settler uh, is known. His address is known. Ev the leaders of this pogrom, every one of them is known and their addresses is known. Why didn't the Israeli authority up till now make any action? No arrest? Uh, no, I mean, it's, 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 Israel, it's, it's, is, you see, there is no symmetry here. When, when a Palestinian stone is thrown on a settler, the whole army is mobilized in five minutes. It took them five hours for a continuous pogrom that could have ended like another Sabra and Shatella. It could have been a massacre. Nobody, nobody can prevent them to kill Palestinians if they wanted. And the army did not Sarah, move. Are you, why are, are doesn't, you finished, are why you, doesn't, you why doesn't the army, a, 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 um, why propaganda? doesn't the army, why don't you just, why don't you just accuse Israel of, of carrying out a genocide as well? Why do, why do you keep on presenting those same lies over and over again. I'm asking you one question about Hawara. Why didn't the army the war in 2021 was started not as a result of anything that Israel did, as the lie that you just presented. It was pre it was started as the war between Hamas and Fatah. Read the so, the, 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 the the public surveys of Khalil Shkaki, a Palestinian market surveyor, who asked the Palestinians, do you believe that this was a war over Al-Aqsa? And they answered, no, we believe that this was an internal war between Fatah and Hamas because Mahmoud Abbas canceled the elections that were meant to be held in, in April. So it's sad that you promote that same lie over and over again. Now you want to talk about Khawara, let's talk about Khawara. Where were the Palestinian security forces when Palestinian terrorists have for the last year and a half been constantly on a daily basis attacking every single car that drives through Khawara? Where were the Palestinian security forces who had just received 600 million shekel from Benny Gantz when, when the Palestinian terrorists came at blank point Well, this break, justifies that settlers take their own And murdered two Israelis. You talk about something about which you know nothing about. You use superlatives to describe pogroms. Obviously, what happened in Khawara was not uh, acceptable. When the Israelis came down to do whatever they did, it was not acceptable. They should indeed be prosecuted. But I can bet you that you do not know. If you have the name of the of the Israeli that you claim killed, that you, that you claim killed a Palestinian, say it now on television. Say it publicly. Maurice. You're you're making a claim that you have no way to debate them. You're making a claim that you have no way to support them as, as part of your demagogy, as part of your cheap demagogy, which you constantly right. bring the propaganda as if everyone knows and Israel is turning a blind eye. Israel right. I'd like to turn back to the issue of there the... There are a number of people in administrative detention and that cheap demagogy cannot and should not be accepted anywhere. All right, Maurice. I, I, I want to turn back to the issue of uh, the Israeli Arab population community and kind of the rhetoric that we're hearing on the streets from them in terms of how they think both Israel and Palestinian leaders need to respond to this uh, uptick in intentions, this uptick in violence that we're seeing again. What is the rhetoric? Where does the support lie? Well, uh, the Israeli Arabs, the Palestinian Israelis, are feeling more and more isolated. Uh, they have not been even welcome to participate in the current 
demonstrations mm -hmm. that is affecting their own democracy and rights. You know, at the beginning, Arabs tried to be part of these uh, uh, demonstrations, but they have felt that, no, uh, uh, the other Jewish groups, liberal forces in the Israeli society says, this is our own battle, please stay away. We don't want to see you, not your flags, not your slogans, stay away of it. So they are becoming more and more isolated. And uh, there is a collective memory for every Palestinian in Nazareth, in Ramallah, in Jerusalem. We all do have the feeling of being Palestinians. The Israeli Arabs are trying to be uh, equal it's citizens. Unbelievable. They are trying it's to be. Unbelievable how you are They are trying to be equal citizens, but they, nobody is giving them the sense of belonging. Uh, always they have an issue of being. Uh, discriminated even in, in in ways of of being able to participate in coalitions in building coalitions in the government in budgets but again I say nobody is affecting not the Palestinian street not the Israeli Arab street the movement that has happened in 2021 it was like a body without a head nobody instructed nobody influenced it's the, a lot of depression that has been built inside uh, Here, this community, of course, about the and it, it, it reflected itself as mm -hmm. violent resistance to the injustice, mm -hmm. to the dominant let, injustice everywhere. I want to let Maurice respond because we have to go out for a commercial break soon. So, Maurice, now's your chance. You have about 40 seconds. <laughs> Summer, it's unfortunate that you bring up those same uh, platitudes again. Um, uh, the Iran party, an, an Israeli Arab party, was in the previous government whilst those attacks were going on. Um, the, the budget that was provided uh, as part of the previous government was even adopted as part of this uh, government. 63 billion shekel going to the Arab sector. There is a growing number of Israeli Arabs involved in volunteering for the Israeli army, the IDF, every single year. Israeli Arabs are feeling more and more involved in Israel proper and less and less involved in the Palestinians. Read the report by All Khalid right. also published last week, that provides the exact same statistics. Israeli Arabs want to be Israeli. They okay. do not want to be Palestinians. All right. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. We're going out for a quick commercial break. I'd like to thank both of you so much for joining us in the studio.